Jesus. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Comedy Seller Nightly Show. My name is Dave Juskow. It is the holiday season. Great to see everybody. We are here above the Comedy Cellar at the in-studio with uh, me and little Mike Suarez having a jolly old time this time of the year being in downtown Manhattan, New York City. We are in the West Village. If you were here today, you could come to the Comedy Cellar and see Tom Papa in Come to Papa, his monthly show he does here. It's like a little radio show. I've been on it many times. It's super fun. It starts at 7.35 tonight. So if you get down here in time, you can see it. Obviously, plenty of other comics here tonight. You settle down. You be you, Maurice. <laughs> you. This is me. Just relax. I do promotions. And then uh, Sam Morell and David Tell, of course, at the end of the night, all going to be here. And, of course, in Las Vegas, our club in Las Vegas, we have the great Mark Coco Cohen. Of course, oh, always man, hosting the show. Hello, Ange. Nice to see you. Hello, a week late. This is our chat room all oh. getting ready to go. And nice to see everybody. Uh, okay, so let's just uh, get into it. I will introduce you. We've been waiting a long time. It's been a year and two months. Because I'm a drunk. It's not just you. <laughs> Mike messed up, too. Oh, American Airlines messed up. That's right. American well, American, American Airlines, Airlines is a drunk, by the way, too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, we are fortunate enough today to have, as promised, our my good friend, who I've known for many, many years. Who did you promise? I, we promised our no one our viewing audience. Hi, Marcy. Uh, Dino Stamatopoulos is here today to join us in the festivities I'm so and the nervous. fun. <laughs> You're never nervous. Uh, well, I was let me just to compliment you. Tell you a little about Dino. You might uh, let me give you a little bit of his credits where you're talking about the Ben Stiller <laughs> show, the Dana Carvey show, uh, the Letterman show, Mr. Show, TV Funhouse, <clears throat> Mad TV, Lucky Louie, Moral Oral, Community, the Jack and Triumph show. The list is endless. Mad TV, a lot of nice people work there. I didn't like that show. I don't even remember you working on that show. I it thought that was one of the ones yeah, that wasn't it was probably free. a month. I worked there. Oh, it was? Maybe three months. It was it was a cycle, they call it, in the writing business. And everyone was really nice. It just, uh, I don't know. I just, uh, I think I was over <clears throat> sketch at that point, too. Um, but they, uh, yeah, they were, they were, they were so sweet. I, I, I'm, um, that's the one. Here's, here's, I remember we were in a, a meeting and somebody, uh, this show had been on for like 12 years at that point. And someone said, guys, I have some great news. We were an answer to a, a New York Times crossword puzzle. And everyone screamed, yay. And I'm like, you've been on for 12 <laughs> years. That's your claim to fame? And the, uh, the answer was blank TV. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the courtship blank Eddie's father. Uh, it was ma TV. <laughs> you weren't at D. You weren't there when Artie Lang was there, right? You were no. way after. No, no. Because he was there, like, maybe the first or second season, right? Uh, that would have been fun. Because we would have done some good drugs and he, drinking together. He was at what, Mike? He was there at the beginning. He was there at the beginning. Okay. You know, yeah, I was I actually, uh, uh, they would have hired me to be the head writer on that show at the beginning, like the showrunner. But uh, I, I saw a couple of their clips. One of the, the clips was Gump Fiction. Mm -hmm. It was a uh, Pulp Fiction, Forrest Gump. Yeah, and I'm like, I never want to work on this. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mean because it has a soft U sound? That's why you put those two sketches together? And I, I'm with you, and that would probably, I wouldn't be okay with that either. But it is total Mad Magazine of what they used to do. If they were ever going by the magazine, I mean, that's all they did, I right? I wasn't in a Mad Magazine much either. Like right you weren't no you didn't grow up with mad magazine like because me and the talk about it all the time i didn't learn to read till i was 18. oh that yeah. could be an issue yeah, yeah that was a problem <laughs> <laughs> that's probably why i didn't like mad tv i uh yeah well i guess it started i don't know i guess if they're in the 12th season and they're still doing gump fix literally the people would ask me what hey what so what are you doing now and i'm like uh, i'm working on mad tv and they're like that's still on yeah it lasted much longer no than one knew it was remembers. on at the time yeah very nice people, all sweet people. First of all, let me just say you're dressed impeccably today. This is my Terrific. first. Um, let me. See. This is my first tailored shirt. Uh, 
It's Taylor. <laughs> First Taylor too. Yeah. I when I saw you, you said you lost weight, but your head is still big. That's what you said in an instant. Yeah. I don't know if I've really lost weight. Maybe the suit slims me. Well, that's true. Yeah. Well, a tailored suit is the best. They do. I think you lost weight. I don't remember you being ever that heavy. So. Well. I just saw you, you haven't really scrutinized me. <laughs> I just saw you recently uh, playing with your band, which I didn't know you had, and you were wearing like a white suit, and you looked amazing. Oh, really? The white suit looked amazing. Yeah, I thought so. Here, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, was it yellow or white? It was white, right? It was an off white. An off white. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, there's no sound, but here's the. I do oh, believe my husband, your boss, told you to <laughs> take the me out to oh, whatever the I wanted. Oh. Okay. okay. Oh, is this? Oh my God! Okay. Oh, you know what? They call oh, Shrek oh, wow. Is this guy good? Chase. Or what? No. Oh, wow. Chase. And it's, no. The, the sketch was just him saying the movie's quotes, but no. as a horse. Right. Yeah. I mean, Shrimp God. Royale. It's ridiculous. No. Ack. Wow. Well done, Mike. That's unbelievable. What um you know, I just had something I was gonna say about uh. It's banned. The what? His band. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's called Sorry About Everything. Yeah, I know it was really good. It I'm sorry I was surprised. I didn't know you sang. I, I barely sing. Yeah. Uh I don't know. I I thought you were great and the band and the music was good and you write all the songs and it was really good. Oh, you're very nice. It was uh very entertaining. I feel like the songs move and they have good melodies to them. And it was a really fun night. I bought that girl Rachel, and she really enjoyed it too. And yeah, you almost didn't get in, right? Yeah, but it wasn't your you fault. Yeah. yeah, it was whoever was working that. Do oh no, I thought it was her. Then. No, it wasn't her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dino's friend Lara is here too, <laughs> watching watching the festivities today. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was really for that because I told everybody that story that uh, before that I went to a place called Lucky, and do you know that bar? Yeah, yeah. So I went there and. I like that bar. My friend Paradox like bar, works too. there on the I, weekends. I like all bars. You know what I say, um, and this is true. If you ever want to meet me anywhere, you could go to any bar at any time in New York and I'll be there. I know that's true. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah. So I was at Lucky and the owner, I said, I said, um, can I get a bud can or something? And they're like, hey, we don't serve that kind of shit here. We don't serve anything by Anheuser Busch. Oh. Or we don't serve Jack Daniels either. I ordered a Jack and what? Coke, and she started yelling at Her me how they she doesn't. Or... Um, well, that's what I thought, but it turns out she just doesn't want anybody that drinks Jack Daniels or Anheuser Busch at her bar. It has nothing to do with homophobia. Oh. Just those people are considered douchebags. Oh, so she's like, yeah, you can get thing. that anywhere else around that's here. The thing. I hated Bud before it was cool by the conservatives to hate bud i always like a bud can and what this is the first time i've asked for a jack and coke in years and i just yeah. was like today i'm gonna do it and then the best is i saw her at the baker what's it called baker falls yeah baker falls and she's sitting there drinking a bud i saw the I, she didn't know i was gonna catch her there. i'm like what the you two-faced what the, really uh, yeah and I, whoa well, what'd she say to that no she was like I, I just don't want it at my bar. That's all. It was, <laughs> it, was, it was really funny. And then we, I bought her a drink and we hung out all night. She That's was really weird. terrific, really great. Wow. She, she was, I thought out. she was there to see you, but she was there to see that band after about the guys, you know them, oh, the yeah. guys after too. So Yeah, yeah, Tom Clark. So you probably know this woman. She owns Lucky. Oh, yeah. Well, fuck her. Why didn't she come <laughs> see us? She did. She was there from the beginning. Yeah, but and then she's just like, "Oh, I didn't know. Oh, there was somebody first. Oh, right, right. So she just got. I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. really nice, very yeah. nice. Yeah, Angie, maybe her name is or something. Yeah, I don't something know names. Like who Hi, are Aaron. you, by the way? What? <laughs> Aaron Scruffy Bones, Anonymous, Marcy. Nice to see everybody. Everybody's in the chat room. They're oh, all okay, commenting or having a good time. Everything's cool. Nice. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, I mean, there's so much to talk about. I just, I'm trying to think where to begin. Sometimes I like to just uh, kind of start off with a I'm couple of think where to end. couple of headlines. Mike, do you want to uh, show the, the the first pictures I uh, put up today? Which um, you can see. Are they pictures of us over there? No, well, they will be <laughs> later. But right now, I think this was news items. Oh yeah, that's right. It was. Oh, you're um, doing a desk piece. Yeah, I'm doing a desk piece. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Well, it you seemed like the right it. thing to do. Um <laughs> this is um the what, what, what I have is Kerwin Frost. 
I don't know who he is, but he makes an adult Happy Meal for McDonald's. It's a real thing. Mm -hmm. But I thought they were talking about, and I can't remember how old you are. I thought they were talking about the next picture, Mike, which is Lance Kerwin. Oh. You know what this reminds me? I don't know whether we're the same age or not that you would know about this. I love Lance Kerwin. <laughs> me too. No, well, I, do you I remember who didn't is. want to fuck Lance Kerwin? <laughs> and, well, but I'm not a pedophile because I was his age. Yeah, right. At the time. <laughs> do you remember? Now I don't want when to he fuck did the uh, Lance Kerwin. Maybe I'll fuck Lance Kerwin now as he is. He's dead. What? He just died this year. This year? <laughs> yeah, I just found out when I was doing this gag. <laughs> <laughs> Was it big nugget related? Oh my god! And the and the weird part is, do you remember fifteen? Do you remember? Oh, yeah, well, well, then it turned to sixteen. And, remember, but it's a big deal. But my my favorite thing, and we did a, a a bit about it on Mr. Show, which I think I pitched um, that it should be like the loneliest runner. About, that's that's what I was going to talk about. Yeah, that's how me and Tell first bonded. Yeah, over that sheet hung out the window with the yellow stain. <laughs> like, Amazing. That was the greatest. Amazing. Laura, this this movie. If Michael Landon made it, it was about him, and he was yeah, a he was runner. a bedwetter. Yeah, he was a bedwetter. So in that in this movie, all we We're remember talking about to Lara, it, my friend here. Yeah, all we remember about it is that his mom held out the bed sheet with his yellow so stain on it, and, him, and he had to run home fast every day to take the sheet down and then he became an olympic star <laughs> <laughs> an olympic runner and that, guess uh, what michael landon was not an olympic runner no he was not no. but uh oh God, but so i'm so I, glad you so remember we, that too so then we wrote a bit on mr show about a kid who was raised by two retarded parents <laughs> right <laughs> uh, i know i forget what you're supposed to call them now i have no idea uh slow dummy <laughs> <laughs> but um that, but he had to keep running for no reason he had to keep running he ran back and forth and then he became an olympic runner uh what is this oh there it is but mike you're so fucking good oh my scene i think about that all the, i tell people all the time my mother used to do this to me just because uh, it makes people feel bad like she did it was awful there should be a whole country where we send all the bedwetters and that's a flag <laughs> a, a yellow sheet a yellow a little <laughs> yellow circle in the middle <laughs> you can go to the next one mike this is so weird i just saw these recently this is um this was was uh it's keanu reeves on the subway it's like just straight they have people just taking he's just taking the subway oh no he's he's a saint right like everyone loves him now yeah right when yeah. the john wick movies changed all that do you think uh, I mean, I I like Keanu Reeves, and I love that he's very nice and everything. But do you think if he was a great actor, you wouldn't be like that? Maybe yeah. you'd be more cocky. Yeah, yeah. I would hope that would be the case. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> yeah. what makes him all right. And the next one, look at this next one. I can't even believe it. That's Paul McCartney in the tube in I London. Mean, come on, that's Paul. unbelievable, right? That guy tries. Too I much. love this picture. He tries too much to be the everyman. Uh, maybe, but I he couldn't do this fifty years ago. I mean, I can. I'm surprised he can do it now. That's when you know you're just an ah, old who man. gives a shit at this point. I don't think that's a recent picture because lately I've seen him with like a big, like like uh like a big gray eight o'clock. Well, I thought that was from maybe a year ago, shadow. but maybe you're right. He still looks so good. Oh. And what's the, uh, oh, and the last one, Mike, is uh, just, this is where they came up with the nine people who they're thinking about, uh, <laughs> who they're thinking about the person of the year. I just like that. There's a picture of uh, the nanny. Uh, <laughs> that she, uh, they're talking about the Hollywood strike, but it's, oh yeah. What are the odds that in 2023, the nanny was going to be the most interesting person? <laughs> of, uh, but I, I don't see how it, can't be actually taylor swift I, i've never oh, yeah. seen anything like this before yeah ever i mean since the beatles it's it's, yeah. it's insane yeah i can't believe it do you like taylor swift not particularly i mean i don't know any of her music or anything but i, I don't I, know any, i would never say well, i don't I, my like daughter her. was into her music and i kind of liked some of her songs like she liked like bad boys and i was like oh i might have a chance with taylor swift oh you definitely have a chance with taylor swift <laughs> i think everybody has a chance she is looking for love right but then uh but then i see interviews with her and she's kind of adorable oh she's definitely adore i mean she's gorgeous well not just that but i think she's kind of uh she seems funny actually down to earth she seems to hang out in jersey a lot yeah i'm gonna like that i already find her attractive for that yeah uh what the, the i can't stand is it, it's hilarious <laughs> it's hilarious that she keeps showing up 
at uh, football games, and the Chiefs are doing horribly now. Every time she's there, yeah, now people let's are going to start blaming her. Uh, well, we are so doing that just later. to shut me up. You just want to well, real me. quick. I do like how Sam Altman's like, okay, guys, now hear me out. <laughs> yeah, wait. What is is that? The guy that is in trouble and in jail? I, I don't know who that is. He's a Bitcoin person, right? Well, he's I not going to win. Jeff Altman. Oh, pink, pink lady, lady and Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Wow, we're twins. All right, you can get rid of that mic. <laughs> also, I, my my votes for President uh, Xi Jinping. Well, isn't that the guy? Wait, he's China or Japan? Well, he's not Japan. Okay, because remember that girl from Japan, the princess was really pretty, so we like her. <laughs> Did um, yeah, were, do you still have the podcast that you were doing with Andy Dick, but now you're not, or was that a long time ago? We we sometimes do it. It's it's mostly when friends. Uh, we're just a bunch of friends who get together and uh, talk on Zoom and, and invite whoever wants to. But it's always boring. What happened with and Andy? There's two, with besides Andy? the obvious that he's insane. That's the, the obvious is what it is. Yeah. It's like he's just a um, you know, drunk drug addict and uh, nearly homeless. I didn't know him as well because you worked with him on the ben stiller show right i mean you've known him for a long well 30 I, I, 40 years i i've known him we went to college together when i uh, oh yeah we, uh there's a in chicago columbia college it's it's not columbia university it's spelled with backwards k's um and uh we uh it was an arts college and i was doing comedy cabaret which was a sketch live sketch show down in the basement in the cafeteria and andy was watching and as i was leaving he just looked at me and said i want to work with you <laughs> and i'm like who is this i was like he's a cartoon character right. and for like years like two years we hung out and i always like laughed at everything he said even when he was depressed i would laugh he's like right. why are you laugh?" because he's like I, my girlfriend she got a um a present from another guy for her birthday doesn't that suck <laughs> and i just started laughing he's like why are you laughing i'm like i don't know i thought you were joking right you thought he was doing it ironically yeah saying it right but he but he wasn't yeah i always thought that too yeah he's no, always been like that always been like that and then and then he got serious when after he had a baby he got serious and he's like we were a comedy team and he's like fuck you you're not committed to comedy and you he, two were a comedy team yeah yeah is that how you went to the ben stiller show like you went together no i uh i didn't even want to go to the ben stiller show he wanted me to write for it and i'm like i don't know if i could work with you anymore because you're crazy you know and uh but um you know i was a pa and i'm like all right well i'll, I'll give it a shot <laughs> you know so uh but uh yeah so i i handed in uh, a bunch of writing i had in judd apatow he said to me, he's like, I put it aside because I'm like, I'm not going to take Andy's advice. He's a, an insane person. And then a friend of his was in his apartment and read my Simpsons spec uh, that I wrote and uh, and liked it. And then Judd read it and hired me. On the and you won an Emmy for that, right? Not the Simpsons spec, but the, no, no, the, yeah. the Stella show. We, like we, right really the early staff, on. The staff won an Emmy, but it was mostly for Bob Odenkirk's writing on that show. Oh, he was writing on it too. That's yeah. how you met. This and whole and thing the episode that won had it. three of his sketches on. I didn't even have any sketches on that episode, but I still got an Emmy. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> cool. That's really how old were you then? 27. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I um I didn't deserve it. <laughs> I hung out with Andy Dick one time uh after the Kong show. Yeah, I, I, it made me nervous. I don't know. Yeah. We went out to the parking lot to get high with um Zoe Friedman. Do you know her? Is she the uh, an heir to the comedy? Uh, yes. yes, yes, that's Bud Friedman's daughter. Yes, Bud Friedman. So we went, but that's when I um said, "Remember that woman that used to own the comedy? The, the, some, what an asshole!" I used the c word, and she goes, "You mean my, <laughs> you mean my mother?" And I'm <laughs> like, "Asshole." <"What?" laughs> she and I'm like, "You're, oh yeah, I guess it is your mother. I'm sorry, I apologize. I, I totally <laughs> forgot it was her mother because Zoe's so nice, right? Yeah, and um, yeah, and then Andy, we got high, and Andy started acting crazy." Yeah. I'd never met him. I knew about him. Yeah. But he 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 made me uncomfortable that quickly. Yeah. Uh so I can't even imagine spending more time than one day with him like that. That must have been insane. Yeah. 
and when, he's always been like that which is weird the, the the moment i realized i did i had to cut andy off for at least 10 years was after the ben stiller show we were walking down i think it was hollywood boulevard or something and he said can you walk behind me and watch people notice me and i'm mm -hmm. like i'm bored <laughs> i'm exhausted yeah but i guess that makes sense for his character i mean it is kind of funny. how was he able to work on like news radio and like sitcoms like that well i mean he's hilarious no i know but like if he's that insane how were people able to work i with think him? he pulled it together for those moments and then he just got crazier and crazier because he was funny on that show i oh, watched no, every he's, episode he's the, one of the funniest guys i know yeah i mean he's effortless i mean i don't think he knows right that's what's so fun it's kind of like what um smigel told me uh about adam west mm -hmm. when i was asking about right. uh look well yeah uh this amazing pilot that conan and smigel and conan and smigel made right yeah yeah uh it's you can find that on youtube folks i, I have a good one of my comedy by well. it was uh dave cross who gave me the copy of oh, it yeah. and he's like you got to see this i never laughed so hard in my life and I just needed to know if Adam West got it or not. Yeah. So I spoke to Smigel and he goes, um, uh, yeah, I think he gets it. And then I talked to Jonathan Groff, who was working for a Conan. I'm like, what did Conan say? He goes, he said he doesn't get it at all. So I'm still stuck. <laughs> I have no idea. It's it's just like yeah. just like Andy Dick. I feel get like, yeah, look, well, there it is. Oh, my God. I feel like, yeah, it's, it's probably what is the he's story? riding the line of, of like, but anyway, the, so. The story of Lookwell is uh this is a dream for me by the way getting yeah stuff. i i worship so that. you know smigels of he loves detail you know oh i know I mean, i've yeah. seen you walk out of uh yeah. <laughs> too much detail oh yeah we we we've, we've but but it had yeah but i mean he's great well he's hard to work with because of the because detail and the yeah, perfection yeah so like anything that goes wrong he goes crazy so when Lookwell uh aired on the east coast there was no sound oh well, like halfway horrible. through the episode <laughs> could you imagine what he went through yeah I, that, that's it awful. aired once the pilot aired once i didn't even know it aired they were going to judge it by that airing and there was no audio for half that episode on the east the entire east coast of america the usa well i'd be furious too that's yeah. not his fault no i know but that he's a stickler and that on top of it that's insanity yeah so um i remember across after i we went he was really depressed that day i remember and uh Crossing. we went yeah and we went to his house and we you know hung out party a little bit and then he showed me this thing and i was laughing i was my fist yeah. on the ground how funny it was and i said but what are they going to do next week you know and he goes you just have to trust the people that bought this to you i'm like that's the greatest thing anyone's ever said yeah i actually thought of the same thing when i saw that episode because they they put out everything everything yeah. was done in that first episode. it was kind of like um police squad yeah oh yeah yeah it was totally like that and i laughed that hard right. at police squad and in i love those six episodes yep but I don't know how long it could last. Right. Because you're not emotionally invested. You have to be emotionally invested. And they don't really hold up now. I think Lookwell right. would still hold up, but um No, the, the Lookwell pilot would definitely hold yeah, up. Yeah, Police I, Squad, I re I remember the same yeah. thing being on my friend's floor, <laughs> pounding my fist, <laughs> and never laughed so hard. And then of course I was so happy when they came out with the naked gun because I didn't think anybody remembered Police Squad. Right. Because it's about six years later. Yeah. And I was yeah, happy Lee's that God, they that was after airplane. Yeah, yeah. right. After airplane and after yeah. Leslie Nielsen became, you know, yeah. I'm teaching a course on this now. So I love that <laughs> Leslie Nielsen was hired because he was a dramatic actor and he played everything straight. And then he would go on talk shows with a fart with that thing. fart thing. That was so annoying <laughs> because he realized he didn't he, know why he was funny. every talk show. Yeah, he bought that fart. He thing. thought, was, well, I'm funny. I should bring comic legend. <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah. And so I know you didn't know this. So um, with the Jets, the New York Jets, they were on this show called Hard Knocks on HBO this season. Jets is a pizza place, right? No, it is the football the Detroit. Team. Pizza place. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Oh, anyway, it's a football team. Oh. And uh, That's they were on this show called Hard Knocks on yeah. HBO. And the offensive coordinator was like, look, if you're going to be a New York Jet, you got to familiarize yourself with three things. And that is uh, airplane, 
uh, the Naked Gun one, Naked Gun two and a half, because we quoted a lot around here. Like, Whoa. You have to familiarize yourself with a guy named Leslie Nielsen. Whoa. It was really, really great. That's it was, hilarious. It was cool. And uh, yeah, I love that. Day. I love that you're into they sports. I don't picture you in the sports. I am. I, I do. I like gambling. Oh, okay. All <laughs> so right, that's where it, it stems from. And uh, you Aunt Judy, please McDonald's? stop texting me. You're driving me crazy. Uh, <laughs> do you hang out with Norm McDonald at all? No, I never did. I never did. I have one picture with him from Saturday Night Live. What What did you just have of the picture? Oh, that was Leslie Nielsen and Day of the Animals. Oh, when he was serious. Yeah, when he plays <laughs> yeah. the bad guy. Oh, Crazy. Oh, um, nice. No, I never got to hang out with him. I um, I went to Saturday Night Live when Charlton Heston was the host because oh, he was my hero. And Attell and Sauer were. Like, unironically a hero? No okay <laughs> <laughs> i love planet of the apes and right. and ten commandments oh, and i used to do an imitation of them that was like how people started to Planet of the apes is a legitimately amazing movie yeah but i used ten to do like is, i used to do is, him and uh is a piece my of god i was doing a pepto bismol commercial that was my big thing and right have my people not suffered enough <laughs> something like that and so everybody i tell was like hey he's gonna be on you know come by the thing so i so they were on ape costumes yeah. sarah and atel and norm um and so i took pictures i have pictures of everybody in ape costumes um i think i have a picture of farley but he wasn't in the ape makeup and i have a picture of atel atel was so miserable being there dave tell i'm talking about oh yeah um he was wearing the makeup and i got a picture of him just eating a sandwich sad at the cafeteria with what half kind of his makeup, makeup off. was it it couldn't have been planet of the apes makeup was, was excellent it, was it they, i think they got the people to Jesus, do it how it was you eat on, uh, in that you couldn't he that's why he was so miserable <laughs> <laughs> and you had to you couldn't eat for hours and uh and i got a picture with norm and dave in their ape masks wow. but i never got did you spend time with him uh i would have liked that i i met him i always liked him uh I had I had a bit on Conan uh, that um, he didn't like, and and he was right not to like it. He's like, you know, a bit went a little too long, didn't it? <laughs> like, yeah, it went too long. I can picture him saying, and but it, uh, yeah, it hurt me because I loved Norm, but he was right. He was right. When did you get the job on Conan? uh when it first started uh, i was i was hired uh second writer hired after andy richter um and uh so 92 oh wow yeah oh that's early on and how old are you then uh 28 oh so this is after the ben stiller after show. the ben oh, stiller okay show. okay i wasn't sure the i didn't was. actually want to uh keep i didn't have a good time on the ben stiller show uh, you know, J Judd and Ben, they gave me my first shot and I love them for it. And uh, I didn't always get along with Ben. We were different animals in some ways. Sure. Um, and uh, we kind of locked horns a little bit on that show. So I was like, I don't know. I mean, I was used to producing my own sketches and uh, I didn't want to like move on with television because I felt like it was always going to be like this. And uh, so I told my agent, uh, I don't really want to work in television <laughs> anymore. And I, I forget if it was who it was. Well, I guess I must have met you when you were writing on Conan, I think. Yeah. Because, in fact, I know for a fact, because now that I think about it, I went over your house uh, when you had that place in Tribeca by the Holland Tunnel. And um, Andy Richter was there. Yeah. so it would make sense right you had a really nice loft oh yeah yeah remember that yeah well, what would a, you like remember an it? Dungeon <laughs> right in the middle of it. yes i know yeah, yeah. yeah i wasn't gonna bring that up <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it wasn't illegal but uh, <laughs> my daughter might be listening <laughs> <laughs> but then um yeah so when did, then when did you get into my favorite thing which is the stop motion i'm sure you always loved it and you were a fan of ray movie. harryhausen and stuff like that but. i never thought i would be able to write a show because i thought it would be way too expensive um but i i came up with this idea and i thought i was going to use like marionettes or something like that and it was kind of based on davy and goliath a little bit but also like um leave it to beaver and kind of and all that and i thought all right i'll, I'll do it with marionettes instead of stop motion but then i i pitched it 
to Adult Swim, Nick Weidenfeld, uh, I, I met him at some restaurant and I was hung over on Coke. And, I believe and you. Drinking. And <laughs> he came and he just got into an accident, uh, like a hilarious accident where like a guy, <laughs> he hit a guy and they looked at each other and I'm like, are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Let's just move on. And so he was shaken up and he walked in and I started pitching and I'm reading from my pitch i'm like yeah, and then there's this kid and i'm like i can't do this i can't pitch i don't know how to pitch and he's like you don't have to just send me the pitch and we'll probably buy it you know was and this so, moral oral yeah it was moral oral. that was the first one yeah i thought you did something before that no that was the first one and so he he said i said let's do it as marionettes he's like well we're doing robot chicken and when they're down, they need their studio to keep making money. So why don't you do it as stop motion? Oh, like, that would be amazing. Because I because I was going to ask you because I saw your studio in Burbank, yeah. which I believe you said was kind of funded by the Christmas episode of Community that you did the stop motion. Yes, that was after I left uh, Shadow Machine. I, I I started my own studio. Right, right. So I so you did more or somewhere else. Yeah, and then you did like Frankenhole at your own place yeah well we did uh the first season frank and hole at shadow machine and then the second season uh at my place yeah that was like really cool yeah, yeah. and then it, because uh you did two stop motion things for community um one we did the christmas episode and then and then we did uh a just a cartoon version of the gi joe thing <laughs> that was on community that was on community yeah. and how did well you were friends with dan Harmon. so yeah. what when did he decide to put you on and i have the the quote my favorite thing about community you saying i'm not an actor i don't enjoy waiting around for hours on set i hate when people touch my eyes and neck makeup department i can't learn lines quickly yes even the amount of lines i get and i don't need other actors joel McHale asking me why i never got my teeth fixed yeah i hated joel McHale. <laughs> you're, the, you're the fucking best <laughs> Also, I hate my eyes. Yeah, they they put eyeliner under your eyes. I'm like, you don't do that to me. They do. Also, that. Starburns. You know, he's not known for being the best looking guy. Oh, uh, they wouldn't have cast me if. Well, why did they make you go on the show? Well, because they had this character called Starburns that that Harmon uh, came up with. He was watching this uh, this reality show where this guy had these crazy like facial uh, hair features. And everyone kept mentioning, and he's like, quit mentioning my face, you know? And <laughs> Harmon thought that was hilarious. It's like, why, well, then why are you shaving it into your skull? <laughs> and so he created a character called Starburns, and, and everyone got excited about the Starburns character, but they didn't know if it was going to be popular or anything. So they're like, well, let's just cast a writer. And they ended up, yeah. And, uh, and I got a text saying grow your sideburns out your starburns <laughs> and i look to my right and he's just right there like we're at the, at the same table <laughs> like you did to me today at the yeah point. exactly <laughs> <laughs> and uh uh so because they didn't want to like pay a real actor you know they were paying me like minimum you know actors right. minimum for it and they still do i mean they still have like the whole run of the show I know I um I was on the show once. I just did a voice. I did my James Spader voiceover for them once. Oh, you did? Yeah. I paid the pitilance of uh, whatever yeah. that is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it wasn't uh, a popular show when it was on, but it had its fan base. But anyway, so yeah, but I literally didn't I memorized my line. I didn't even memorize the line before me. <laughs> so, we'd be in a in in a scene and someone would talk and then there'd be silence i'd be like oh that must be me <laughs> so then i'd start talking and i'm like you could edit that right i know exactly what you're talking about i um i remember the like the first time i had like a guest starring role on the sarah show i was like um do you have to memorize the like i was like wait can't you just yeah it's like school cool. around first right, of all, right. I, I, I hate acting because it's like school you got to memorize yeah I, I don't like that no and then i was like geez i guess you have to know it because otherwise you're gonna yeah mess everything up but I didn't know because I was like, well, I'm familiar with it. I'm familiar yeah. with it. And then I went in and I was like, geez, you know, now there's so much pressure. 
if I mess everything up, I'm a dick. Yeah. Especially being the guest star. Yeah. You know, the star yeah, can mess it. everything up. I hate acting. Yeah. I like, I like voiceover. You, 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 the script. As long as you don't shake it and hear the. And paper. your voice is so funny. Like when you would play Chicky uh, on TV Funhouse. Just me. I know, but it's the best. You have this high pitched kind of voice, and it's just really funny. Chicky is me. It's like he's he's just insecure. <laughs> like, why don't you love me? <laughs> <laughs> but it, so, or let me just ask you this: the basic question, I guess, that I assume, like me, Chevy Chase was our hero growing up yeah i mean like i said i'm teaching this thing in 1980 he had three movies out you know with caddyshack and yeah. seems like old times and really awesome chevy even that oh heavenly dog which isn't a good movie who cared because chevy chase was the man and let how, alone how old are you 59 oh you're my age yeah. okay so you got more into his movies than i did i love chevy on on snl of course me too yeah I no, mean, I, yeah, but I, I, the movies I didn't really watch, uh, but I always loved Chevy. And then he came on. Uh, this is another story about how one of my sketches failed because uh, Chevy came on Conan and said, "Hey, that sketch I was just on, yeah, that wasn't good." Ugh, what a, like he he said it on camera. Oh, what a dick! Yeah, but uh, when I got to work with him, I was like, he's still a legend, and I love him. And everyone else hated him because they were younger. That's they didn't really care about him. And also they had to work with him more. I was just, I was more of a, like, you know, a supporting cast member. Yeah. I wasn't always there. But you just, you he heard just, through the things that it, he well, he just horrible. wasted, well, he wasted time a lot and, you know, he was racist. I don't think he's really racist. I think he he just no, he is. Um, he was in the hospital. Uh, my friend's a nurse there in uh, Columbia. Yeah, and they said he was absolutely horribly racist. Like, like in what way? Time. Because I, don't know. I like some old guys just think it's funny to joke. Oh, about. I agree. I know what you're talking about, but it must have been a different way. I think. Okay. I mean, my friend was just like, "Oh, Chevy's here," and then by the time he, he had also left, is kind of an irritating guy. Yeah, but I I kind of loved it, and I got to like do a scene where we were doing drugs together and i'm like i'm doing drugs with one of the first snl cast where everyone just ignored him and i felt bad for him and as he was leaving i was like bye chevy love you and he picked up a piece of cake and fucking threw it at me <laughs> just see all over my face and i just laughed i was like i got the best that was the best moment i did he do it on purpose or was he angry do you think he thought it would be funny I think he hates when people like him oh but I was like, I just thought it was hilarious. I remember one time um, <laughs> we were at your house and Louie was there and there were a couple other guys. And I remember Louie just got up and threw a glass <laughs> like at your, just the way Chevy. Oh, could. he threw a glass and then my friend Brent just caught it. He did? Because I, I thought it, I thought it crashed oh. into the closet. Oh, maybe that was another time. Louie <laughs> likes throwing things. Oh, he does? That was yeah. normal? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I remember destroying things. I remember being completely shocked. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, no, I actually have that picture. In fact, Mike, why don't we just go to the slides I have prepared because I have a couple of stuff. Actually, can I ask one question real quick? Yeah. Uh, it was just about the G.I. Joe episode. Like, when you guys did episodes like that, like, how difficult was it to uh, make everyone into those type of characters? Like, Well, you're asking the exact wrong guy, even though my name is on that episode, because <laughs> I never watched those G.I. Joe cartoons. Me neither. And they were because they were after our time. Yeah. Bit, and know. because I worked in animation, Dan gave that to me. And I I I wrote it and didn't know what I was doing. And it was completely changed. That's funny. That was after the Saturday mornings when we grew up, like yeah. after HR Puff and stuff and stuff like that. That that yeah. we didn't know about those G.I. Joe Mike were too yeah. old. So I literally had zero to do with that episode, even though I still get residuals for it. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> answer. Um yeah, so let's show the uh okay. Yeah, oh, there's lots of stuff. pre 
presentation I put together. It uh, we always start off with. Uh, oh, uh, this George is the Sanders third action. comedy act. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is the eleven o'clock moment. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, that's uh, George Santos, which is funny. This is <laughs> this is his Twitter page. He loves it. It's like everybody's like get not getting the message. George Santos just got kicked out of Congress. He just got kicked out, and this is his yeah. Twitter, yeah. like his banner page. I know a little bit about politics. Yeah. And uh, let's go to the next one, Mike. Well, was that a joke? Right. That No. Oh. Uh, the, I'm just saying, it's a setup, you know, because this, oh. this is one of those scab rats that you right. know, they uh, have yeah. when you're you know what they want to when you're on yeah, strike yeah when you're breaking and now they have one if you go to the next one mike they have the new george santos balloon. oh <laughs> you're really a douche wait you you Blind created bag. that no i didn't create the balloon I did. <laughs> oh what happened? i find these uh you know pictures online you know if you try to so you're taking online. other people's jokes <laughs> that's not a joke this was in the news <laughs> i'm doing a, a what did you just call it a dust piece <laughs> yeah i know but so you didn't create that balloon balloon no i didn't create it. i just made the gag from the rat to this that's it's a real that's balloon you can my do. joke oh but you photoshopped that no i didn't that's for real it's on cnn but then it's their joke well that's their joke but this setup was not let's <laughs> they're move not on. making the joke they're just saying this thing exists <laughs> But what's there? Why does that exist? Look, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to sl slow the show down. <laughs> well, he's full late. of life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. If, on. if you do, I don't if you try to make happening. a competing rat uh, that looks too similar, they do sue you. Apparently. Oh, uh, yeah. This yeah, that's right. Right. Is uh, that's my question, but I don't care. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to the next one. Right, that's Kevin Spacey, and the only reason I brought that up is because of the next picture. Where I thought he was much like picture the dad from Moral Oral and uh, oh yeah Kevin Spacey, he looks like Kevin Spacey. No, I think that he's very much like I. I could picture if you were making a movie or a TV, a live action show, I could see Kevin Spacey playing the creepy dad. Yeah, yeah. So it was his pants always. Oh dropped, yeah, didn't he? You know, I know Anthony Rapp. Do you know Anthony Rapp? I don't. I know of him. Yeah, wasn't he, he in trouble for? No, Anthony. Oh, that's the guy who sued or whatever. That's the who guy who he accused. accused, right? He's a Broadway guy, right? Yeah. He was, he was in Rent. He was friends with Andy Dick, oddly enough. Oh. Yeah. And oddly enough, he he accused Kevin Spacey and not Andy Dick of anything. I guess Andy Dick. Maybe Andy Dick. Maybe he wasn't young enough. Maybe Andy Dick, everybody expected that to happen. And right, yeah. Kevin Spacey, like, what? Yeah. Um, is Anthony, Anthony Rapp. Rapp Sarah Jessica Parker's brother or I something? I don't think so. No. Yeah. Uh, doesn't say it is. Um, let's go to the next one. We'll get to the good stuff here. It's like, oh, good. You'll like this because um I will. Well, because <laughs> now I know your age. This is Amy Carter, because her mother oh. just died. Oh, this is gonna be fun. But I didn't <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know I, I hadn't heard about Amy Carter, but remember when we were kids, mm -hmm. if you go to the next picture, you know she looked like that right, right. i mean it, it was so funny i we forgot about her right and if you go to the next one do you remember when she went to a public school and it was a big deal and that's the secret service guy <laughs> following her to public school wow. and and do you remember the next one where SNL did that amazing sketch where she goes to public school and they're beating up Gilda Radner for telling on her. <laughs> like, uh, that, I remember that as a kid. It was the best. Dan Aykroyd is the Secret Service. I think it's. So we I go think back it's to the Secret yeah. Service picture. Yeah. Why does he look well? Also, I yeah, yeah, yeah I feel looks, like he like should him. get arrested for following her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that poor girl. Why they sent her to a public school, but with Secret Service guards. It's like why that would even, be funny. Why if other even Secret her? Service guards came and said, "Why are you following this little girl?" <laughs> <laughs> and remember, in SNL, they were like sitting there. They kept giving her the answers. <laughs> it was a great sketch because it was so weird that she was going to public school um and that's i, I love carter for that he was trying to be a, it was a normal cool. yeah guy. yeah uh go to the next one mike and please. it's interesting that uh that Aykroyd was a secret service guy in that bit because he played carter yeah and you know right, what i loved right. about early snl they didn't have any makeup nope yeah that was the best they just had a right? mustache Yep, you didn't. They didn't give a shit. No, like it was fantastic. Chevy Chase played 
Gerald, Gerald Ford. Ford with hair, and, and it was like the greatest, <laughs> yeah, right? Best. And he would just fall didn't, and didn't do a voice, yet no voice, right? He couldn't even, yeah, it was nothing. It was just falling, and it was awesome. <laughs> and he's like, "Should I attempt to scale the yeah. uh, stair?" Chevy was the man. Yeah, I mean, he really was. If you were a boy our age, Chevy was handsome and cool, yeah. and just like the shit. I mean, he was just such confidence. Yeah. Yeah, and the confidence just, is what it was. Yeah, and the dickiness yeah. was awesome <laughs> at the time. Yeah, and then it and became then as an older man, you're like misplaced confidence. Yeah, yeah but I mean, up until Fletch, he, I mean, yeah. every guy our age knew every line from that movie. You know except that, you. except you, yeah. right? Uh, so that is a uh, sheep, sheep yeah. right? I think in India, and when he's just, you know, what it, a sheep looks like, it's checking in on that guy, like a human. And then if you go to the next one, then I have. Of course, the oh, uh, that's you. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> Are you working that puppet? Uh, yes. Yeah. Remember how mad Smiga was getting because I didn't know how to work the puppet. And, I had, I had, and I, he I, was making me sweat. So my hand was, it was latex, and it was getting sweaty, and so it was, you yeah. know, becoming the the puppet. I, I I got a few friends' jobs on that, and he yelled at everyone. Well, I didn't. I it didn't so bother bad. me that much. But, I mean, it did. I guess he was just making me nervous because yeah. my hand got sweaty and I didn't know how to work the puppet. So I'm just going like this and talking yeah. and yeah. doing the best I could. You but... know, with that show, we had actually real puppeteers uh, working very lifelike chickens next to real chickens. Right. I remember. And we fired them all because you couldn't tell which was the puppet and which was the animal. I know. It was very impressive. Yeah. <laughs> so we had to like we had to do it ourselves so we could jerk him around i know i remember i think we were under when i played the but then he got mad that you weren't puppeteering well enough. yes exactly <laughs> that's what it, it was a yeah it was a real catch-22 <laughs> yeah you go to the next one i think it's the same yeah that's yeah, christmas yeah. although i think they dubbed in your voice it was for me yeah even I though forget, it's supposed what was to I be saying? me don't don't, don't freak, freak out, out don't, don't freak, freak out. out right because we were doing christmas cheer we were yeah. tapping in what was his name um the host of the show uh doug yeah we were tapping in doug and they were your your spinal tapping doug's christmas cheer so you could shoot it up yeah right and it was uh yeah christmas uh what what, what was it be called um like molly now or something uh yeah you would free base yeah yeah cheer. and uh it was so funny if you go to the next one mike in fact that's where they went uh we we went to your son your all oh, right dino is it. chicky and then he went to his son, who is a, a little genius. chick, who's a chemical genius. Yeah. And then <laughs> and then he tried freebasing, and he and the chick got on fire. Right. Then yeah. I have the, the no one go gave, the next one. No one gave a shit. Yeah. Then. The... <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh, that was great. Yeah. Right. And so we were right freebasing. We all got, and I ended up my she ended up sleeping with you and then waking up and being really <laughs> upset about it and then had to be santa at christmas right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean this show fucking rules this man. might have been the episode where a duck shit in my mouth by the way <laughs> right because we were underneath yeah when you're the, when you're animals we were underneath a pig yeah when you're working puppets the stage has to be lifted right but then so and there's holes in the stage but then next to the puppet is a real animal and i saw the the, the duck like side-eyeing me <laughs> and then its sphincter opened up <laughs> and of course the first thing i do as i see the sphincter opening up is go <laughs> open my mouth up wide and shit right in my mouth <laughs> and i i stopped production for like an hour like walking around screaming and then i did the rest of the show with a bag over my head a plastic bag <laughs> That was a terrible, <laughs> terrible day. No! <laughs> yeah, of course, when a duck's about to shit in your mouth, you open your mouth up wide and scream. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Uh, wait, go on to the next one. I have more pictures. For oh, so, oh, so this is the Rockefeller Christmas tree lighting. With these people looking out the window. Did you get to have a front row view when you were working at Conan to, like, watch the I don't tree know lighting which, or anything? I don't think we're on that side, but we used oh. to do things out the window. We used to do a thing called uh, uh, feeding the fish. Well, it's it's kind of disgusting. We we had so much money that we would we would throw <laughs> money out the window, and, like and watch 
how long it took people to grab it. <laughs> we used to do that at Jets games all the time. At the Meadowlands, they had spirals. Yeah. So we'd throw money down yeah. and watch kids get it. And once they went out to get it, you'd throw beer at them. Oh, like bottles. Oh, we didn't. We didn't actually. <laughs> was, we yeah, didn't punish it. <laughs> yeah, we punished. Them. <laughs> it was a legendary. They they got when they built the new stadium. They got rid of those spirals. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you go to the next one, I think it's a picture of you. There it is. Uh, you, so there, yeah, that's young Louis, Louis in and, the front in the blue shirt. There's Smigel. Smigel. The, the, Who's the guy in the end on the left there? Uh, that's uh, Dave Reynolds. Oh, I, I don't know him. Um, and Andy Richter behind the right. mask. I took every picture with my mouth open. I thought that was funny. <laughs> um, Michael Gordon is next to me to the the right. No, right. And then to the left, that's Marsh McCall, who sadly uh, died uh -huh. um, a couple years ago. It would be odd if uh, this was 30 years ago, maybe more, if somebody wasn't dead in those pictures. Yeah, he was still point. young. He was like, you know, I mean. Wait, the guy, you said Michael Gordon? Yeah, Michael Gordon. Oh, wait. Who was the guy who used to write for Conan, but he was also on Blossom? Oh, Michael Stoinoff. Right. Yeah, I got him that job. He, he's yeah, a, he's a funny right. guy. We went to college. Together. He was really nice. Yeah. He was the older brother on Blossom. Yeah. That no one remembers. I do. Uh, you introduced me to him. He was nothing but nice. Yeah. And um, yeah, and then the rest of the, I was surprised that he wrote for. I thought that was really cool that he was on this sitcom and that he wrote for Conan after. You know, that's yeah, he very was always, rare. He was always a guy who I I, I, I laughed with. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He was a nice guy. Yeah. Uh, go to the next one, Mike. Oh, this is uh, this was the Rockefeller tree lighting, and Barry Manilow singing. Mm. Now I don't know if you've which, seen which song. I don't know. Probably some of it. Maybe one from his new Broadway show. Go to the new one, the next one, Mike. Because uh, yeah, that's that's Barry Manilow singing. But if you go to the next one, that's yeah. what he looks like now. Whoa. And everybody has been making fun of him on Twitter. Who does he look like? Well, go to the next one. Looks like Danny K now. Yeah, he looks like Danny K. Well, they ask if he looks like Martin Short in an SNL skit. <laughs> right. Everybody was yeah, picking Martin on Short him. Yeah, Martin Short could play him really well. Everybody was picking on him because, you know, what is that? It's well, way too much he's Botox. He's the male Barbara Streisand, right? Well, Barbara doesn't look bad like that. They're about the same age. Go to the next one, Mike. See, here's the difference. See, there? look at the difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, we remember him on the left, and he was awesome. Yeah. And this, this new, I saw him in concert right. five years ago. And uh, it's kind of awesome. Well, let's pull up a, a shot of Barbara. I don't, I don't know if she looks that great right now. I think she looks still looks pretty good. She She's was just on Howard like last week, and she looked okay. You're such a fag. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go to the next one. Oh, this is this lady in this like biodome that she's um, trying to make. I guess kind of like what the the Martian movie with uh, Matt. What's his name? Um, Damon. Yeah, Matt Damon. They're, they're trying to make stuff. To, for life on mars but uh, the only reason i brought it up is if you go to the next picture the girl who's inventing it, the girl in that bubble is kind of hot so that's why i put it up there oh well <laughs> we'll, we'll let you masturbate later. <laughs> Jesus. and if you go to the next one it's like she she spoke at mars con whatever like because they're they're trying to build this on mars that's their plan because this is necessary because we're obviously we're destroying everything here so i guess maybe yeah destroy something else now yeah that's funny yeah Thanks. go to the next one we're depressing Aww. all of us this is a oh turtle going back to the sea you know that's this is why uh, baby things have big eyes so we don't smash them to is that true yeah so they can see you coming you mean no no so yeah big eyes to every animal means we love them so we don't see sure it is cute if you go to the next one i only brought it up because then i was thinking of the uh <laughs> <laughs> that was smigel playing that turtle and and he's playing wait does that triumph also yeah i don't think he's playing that turtle that i, I uh, he was i think oh okay but uh john glazer did the voice of the turtle oh he Oh, that's right. Uh, but maybe he came in later for voice. No, you're right, because uh, I was getting confused when Smigel was playing the endangered species right. person. I got them mixed up. My, I, yeah, yeah. The my, lizard or something. But my favorite uh, joke about the turtle is the way he got around. Instead of taking the subway, he got flushed down the flushed toilet. the pipes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, go to the next one, Mike. We're going to take it, the pipes. Yeah, because this was the one you did in Vegas. Oh, yeah. There's Fogey and Chicky. I got to Triumph. act. I, I got to, like, 
be at Robert Goulet's crotch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, Dino's underneath. Dino's the chicken on the left, and he's underneath. Yeah. And Smigel's. I wasn't afraid triumph. of Goulet, but I was afraid of. Uh, I had to be that close to a chimp, and I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Because they right. rip out your crotch. Yeah. No, I remember. My crotch. Uh, I was. What was I next? I was next to a pig. A live pig. Pigs are fine. That was eating ribs because oh, right. the restaurant refused. same. There was a a, a restaurant called I, Sames. I have it coming oh, up. Okay. Here, go to the next one. Um, yeah, there it is. <laughs> so yeah, the so dog saves because this is fucking brilliant. The dogs uh, the dog and the cat are eating Asian food and they're like, <laughs> uh, this tastes like cat. <laughs> and the cat's like, Yeah, this tastes like duck, so they switch. I'm eating fried chicken and the duck's eating Peking duck. Yeah, it's a restaurant called Sames where you eat what you are. Yeah. And it was the it yeah. was the uh, the window was Smith and is it Smith, Smith and Smith and was it? I, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That was and you turned it into same. That's funny because <laughs> my my friend Gabe, who I write with, his uncle started with Smith and Wilensky. No way. Yeah. Wow. I got to show him that. But um, yeah. So what we're talking about is we got a great shot. You have it of the pig. Eating, eating the ribs. ribs no i i or maybe I'll go to the next one mike because i uh did i have that one no i guess i didn't i um that's right. go to the next one because i know that's the one with me oh yeah there it is there it is because that's me i'm the chimp oh yeah and the, the pig and is that's why i was sitting right he's next got to the like pig. A, a he's rib, eating ribs yeah like it's like a cigar in his mouth yeah and it was really and the lamb is eating lamb chops yeah he had to put vegetation and, down there and now i feel bad about that because that's just why i don't know it seems not right <laughs> that, of course it's not right we, that's why it's funny i know i don't know i'm eating monkey brains yeah and uh i am sitting i am underneath that thing right next to that pig so i had the same problem you did where that i, mean, pig I can't was... believe are you working the mouth yeah. and the hand yes wow it was so difficult yeah i think you were right next to me I think we were doing a I was bit. probably eating the lamb, maybe. I mean, I'm not eating the lamb, but working the lamb. I don't know. We were right next to each other. And yeah, this. The, oh, no, the lamb's real. The chimp was like a, a serious puppet where you had to work two knobs, you know, and he's yelling at you. And I'm like, oh, I, I, I remember you're working the hand and the mouth. And I was just jacking you off. So <laughs> you felt good about it. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. I knew we were together under that table, but I couldn't remember where. And you have your microphone on top of your head. And oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was fascinating in many ways, but you know, Smigel <laughs> just gets angry and you know, we're not puppeteers. We're doing the best we can. <laughs> and that's why we're hired. <laughs> we don't exactly we fired right. the real puppet. I know it's so weird. <laughs> it was a real but it was worth it in you know now. But oh. I remember Dino you know, walking out being so angry at Smigel and you left for the day. I think you came back the next day, but I'm not. I was probably that. half mad at Smigel and half tired. I think that's what you you actually said that. Yeah. You're like, actually, I just wanted to leave. So I, <laughs> yeah, created, yeah. I, I created a scene. <laughs> <laughs> they go to the next one. I don't know what it is. I can't remember. Aww. Oh, that's just a baby rhino. See, I like to see uh... <laughs> Well, it just reminds me that we had the the puppets and the real things. And uh, there's only like 50 of those in the world. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, so it just looks so cute. But what's the next one? Let's go out and kill some. <laughs> oh yeah and that was just that's a, like they have a monkey festival going in thailand on? this is what i show every day <laughs> it's a monkey festival and i just think that that monkey is making that same thing if you go to the um, that that might be my, um uh harman it likes like to add every season something that starburns would add to himself to make himself more interesting oh and then he added the beard how many I, seasons did you do it for um i think five out of the six. Oh, you were in five of them i thought maybe i wasn't in the one that he wasn't in out of solidarity i and i use that in quotes because i don't like acting anyway <laughs> so but uh, right right you got out when dan Harmon left the show right yeah. no i understand that i didn't know you were in all five seasons. so if you go to the next one so this is the one mike showed before and i was they 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 is this them killing you off i don't did know. you get you got killed off right i got killed off I got excited because I thought, uh, okay, first of all, I, I don't have to act again. <laughs> and second of all, it's cool to be like a a, a, a a series character who dies. Yeah. That would be cool. And then they brought me back. And I was oh, like, they did? Because if you go to the next one, Mike, spoiler that, there's your funeral, I guess, I'm assuming. Yeah. And the weird part about this is 
If you go to the next one, Mike, that's my funeral. Oh, I got also killed off as a character on a TV show. What well. show? Oh, the, the Sarah, Sarah Silverman, Silverman program. And, yeah. and another Dan Harmon created Yes, show. yes, that's right. And there is uh, my funeral. <laughs> so the two of us have had television funerals with our pictures. Oh, my of. God. But you really died. I'm so jealous. Yes, I died in the, you know, because Sarah's very jealous of me. She didn't want to make me die. <laughs> so obvious. Uh, and the weird part is I remember pulling up that day and I was like, where's everybody coming from? Your funeral. <laughs> oh, great. In my car and I'm like, I'm out of work. What? I didn't even know. I I didn't read today's uh, signs. <laughs> uh, what's the next one? I think it's almost finished. Oh, God. This is fucking the greatest sketch of all. Is this considered the greatest sketch on Mr. Show of all time? The audition? You know, uh, um, uh, what's his name from Key and Peel? Uh, Jordan Peel? The other one. I don't know. Michael. The key, the key guy. I, I don't know who that is. Uh, Michael Keegan, Michael Key, Key Keegan, Michael Key. Yeah, I don't know him. I mean, he, I've heard. He of wrote him. a uh, uh, a book on sketch comedy, and he listed that as his favorite sketch. Ever. Keegan, Keegan, Michael Key. You know, it's funny. I never. You know, the weird part is, I was there. I think if I lived in California, I probably would have been on the show because you know, yeah, Ross liked me and everything, and you like me. And um, the first day of shooting, I was sleeping in Mary Lynn Rice Cup's bed um i don't know why and i guess she was staying at dave's and they had to pick yeah. something up so he came in on the first day of shooting and he just woke me up and he goes, did somebody order a clown <laughs> <laughs> and i remember he had the pilot in his hand um and i read it and it was really interesting yeah. and i had then he told me about the did you write this one or uh yeah this? writing is a loose word because uh what happened was i i wrote a play in chicago and we put it up at the annoyance theater but then after the play was over all my actor friends and i would get up on stage and do fake auditions and we oh. i improvised that uh sketch and it just like fell into place it was like just the premise made it fall i remember place. telling my dad about this and he never found anything that funny well he liked funny he just didn't like me <laughs> and um, I told him about this sketch and he thought it was the funniest thing. And then anybody can watch this on YouTube now and it's on it's on Max or HBO. And it is so brilliant. And it's just if you haven't seen it and there's Dino, if you go to the next picture, there's Dino and Bob Odenkirk. And and you're so good in this because, you know, you 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 are you ham things up and you love it. Yeah. But this doesn't work if you're being that way. You have to be right. an actor. You hate acting. I hate it. But acting. if you don't do this correctly, this sketch blows. I was very nervous because I yeah, I'm not used to not hamming it up. So what it is, folks, I mean, if you haven't seen it, it's just tape cross comes at their own. It's really hard to be that young, too. <laughs> I I couldn't play young. I, I think you look amazing like in this. You look amazing. And so Dave Cross comes in, he's gonna audition, and he just starts off like, Can I use this chair? And they're going like, sure. And he goes, no, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe I didn't make it clear. This is part of the sketch. And he just keeps going in my favorite line. Don't look at each other. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's in the sketch when we looked at each other at that exact moment. Yes, it's a very specific piece. It's so absolutely brilliant. You know, I used to do that as a real audition because I, I hate acting. <laughs> so I didn't care if I got the part or not, but I liked making all the the auditioners yeah uncomfortable uncomfortable well you are good at that yeah. but this is a really good acting job you probably don't realize you know obviously bob odenkirk is an actor and you yeah. keep saying you don't like acting but if if you if I you like break in I this do like acting in something i wrote because i know what the motivation is i get an insecure when it's somebody else's bit. i can understand that but he's, i'm just saying like look at your expression there it's like you know if you're not sincere about it, the whole thing falls apart. Right. And it's it's well, so I, yeah, I definitely knew the premise of this bit. So so look look at the next picture. Um, look at this. They actually make the chair <laughs> from yeah, uh, it's a joke toy. I know it's a joke. If one of your fans sent yeah. it to you or something, yeah, and you won't do you still have any of them left? I gave one to Bob and one to David, and I have one left. And and I joke that I like that I opened it up immediately and started playing with it. Oh, there we are. Um, oh, oh, God! It's so it's so amazing. And then, that's only funny if you never open it. So check, yeah, of course, of course. Then check this one out. This next one, the last one, I think. Look at this. I don't know if you the chair. Oh, you know about this? What? 
No. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, they did a you heard about they, it. that was almost exactly the same. Well, no, I think they did well, it on it. purpose. I think they, as an homage in Britain, they oh, really? they did that. Yeah. They redid the sketch. Well, how do you <laughs> do an homage and not uh, uh, pay me? Yeah. Well, that's the <laughs> other thing, I guess. But yeah, this is a British version on the Gold Network. Which, what? They did it? Yeah. They yeah. just ripped it off? They just ripped it off. They did the same movie. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't. Is that the same? I, is that true? Yeah. That's the same poster? Well, same movie. Whoa! Holy shit. <laughs> All right. Look, I don't care. I think it's, it's. Yeah, you did not get paid. It's nice. And I don't even care if I get paid, but I think it's ball. I, of- I couldn't believe it when I saw this. This is how popular Wait, it is. Wait, so it was the exact same sketch? Yeah. They, That's insanity. They did the audition sketch. And they didn't say this is an homage? They just did it? No, yeah, they just did it. I mean, that's, that's insanity. Sad. I don't know what the name of the show is. I mean, that shouldn't be legal. I I, I would never. Well, I, you know what? I guess it was one of those things where maybe they did it in like the early 2000s when nobody cared about that kind of stuff. I guess. And that oh, was in Britain. And, way back then? Well, I, <laughs> well now, I don't no, know. I, don't, I, I really don't care, but I'm amazed I think that's that it, they but... got away with it. Because I don't even own it, by the way. I think HBO could sue them. Right, I guess, but I, you know, I don't know what show that was, but I'd like. But it was called the Sketch Show. So, oh, well. so they did the greatest sketch of all. But time. I will Why say, do they have their own? Material? Can I say this? That I saw um, uh, an Abbott and Costello bit. I think it was in a. I forget if it was in in the Navy or the uh, in the Air Force or something like that, where it was the funniest sketch I ever saw, and I realized, did I get? the premise for audition from this when i was a kid because it was bud abbott and lucasella going into a diner and bud mm-hmm. abbott goes all right we only have uh enough money for one lunch so i'm gonna buy lunch and we'll split it and when the waitress comes to you just say you're you're fine you're not hungry and so she'd come and he'd order lunch and he, she'd go to uh lou what do you want he's like no i'm fine and Bud would go, come on, have some. <laughs> <laughs> and and and, and would like, no, no, come on. The, the woman's here. Are you going to sit here and not eat anything? He's like, all right, I'll have some. Oh, wait a second. And he'd get mad. Uh, and it was the exact same feel. Right, right. The whole. Oh, that's so funny. But yeah. that's. Uh, so, yeah, of course we got all that stuff. I mean, some yeah. of, you know, but you you fixed it up where you would never know probably the difference, but I see what you're saying. And I, and I swear to God, I don't remember seeing that or anything like that, but I was like, I watched every Abbott and Costello sure, we all did. movie when I was a kid. Oh, they were on for us. They were on and every it's Sunday. Such a fucking fun, I mean, you, you got to Google it. It's a funny. Yeah, no, I've never I mean, seen that bit before, but <laughs> what's, I mean, what's those... the matter with you? Order something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the woman's waiting. I mean, there were, that was the best when he would just be like, what's the matter with you? Like it was just and playing would, that character. Would do it like three times, you know? <laughs> It's like you're telling me not to just I, I, yeah. and that is great and because you remember it and obviously it also see, seeps into your subconscious but uh yeah you didn't rip it off it's just it's the same feel like you just said yeah. and, you know god damn so that yeah. that is a legendary legendary sketch which uh i think you guys practiced it at the hbo workspace maybe maybe before the sketch and maybe, i yeah i might have seen i think i saw something you guys practiced and i remember yeah. being so amazed at that you would practice them live and that was uh, great you know the marx brothers did that with uh their with their movies. movies yes i know yeah yeah isn't that crazy they i mean when you watch those movies they're it's so easy you could see them doing it because yeah. it's all just dialogue it's yeah not a real movie it's basically filming a, a play right and and uh and I remember reading that they would um, make sure that they were leaving enough space for laughter. And then when I'd watch it at home, I'd be like, come on, pick up the pace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Right. One person isn't laughing that Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's always difficult. They never, movies they never really. thought there'd be a television set. Right. You know, it's so funny. The Marx Brothers are pretty cool. Oh, my God. The Marx Brothers are still fun. Harpo. Have you ever seen Love Happy? No, it's it's one of their worst movies, but it's never mostly heard of it. Lee Harpo, Marilyn Monroe's, I think, one of her first movies. Really, but it's mostly Harpo, and he's still great. He's still really funny in it. This is before All About Eve, in the sense of that was 1950. Marilyn Monroe, uh, before or after? Probably around that time. But uh, 
Yeah, I didn't even know they were making all the movies. all the Marx Brothers were in it, but Groucho and Chico were in it for like two minutes. Oh, and really? Was all and Harpo was a detective or something. Really? Yeah, and never talked. But of course, he didn't need to. No, I kind of want brilliant. to see it. No, you should watch it. I'd love to. Uh, I think somebody had a tape of him talking recently. That he had a sounded... big New York accent. Really? Yeah. It does. Have you read Harpo Speaks? No. Oh, you got to read Harpo Speaks. It's his autobiography uh yeah I, I i just wish i could have i wish he would have done something where he was talking you know i saw this charlie chaplin movie where he was talking well i mean he talked to but i saw a later one where he was oh, older right. and he's got a british accent and yeah but it was fascinating you know he just yeah. don't expect it and yeah. uh but it was a later movie in the 50s like that. yeah it was kind of cool um i know you hate this but we usually make you know five football picks before we leave you don't you don't have to know anything now you're gonna hate it no you don't have uh, to don't know, know anything to mike is, should we do it or yeah let's just all right look this is last week we uh i still suck mike killed it mike came in second in the pool this week all right it was very impressive i like the bengals <laughs> this the is Chiefs, the 49ers <laughs> the browns and the panthers now go to the next uh the the results that's this is last week you saw our friend alan was picking we've had sarah silverman pick and tom papa and greg fitzsimmons like so, do these people know about football no that's the beauty anybody can pick uh yeah. so if you look at this week's we already have your 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 picture up and uh oh, we're ready for you to feel this is shiny oh you look good see there you are oh so we just uh, really quickly pick five games and you don't have to know anything and i will begin by picking the ravens that's the the little birdie, and you can pick that that way too, the bird. Or well, if you pick the Ravens, I have to pick the other one, right? Okay. Well, you do whatever you want. That's Mike picking. I can't tell what he's going to pick. He's putting a little. Oh, he's putting a little thing on top of the. That's nice. So you, yeah, you have to pick the L.A. Rams or the Baltimore Ravens. Well, I mean, the Ravens could fly, but the Rams have horns, right? That's true. So I would, I think I'd go with the Rams because. Yeah, where are the Ravens going to land? Good. <laughs> no, this is the proper way to pick. Yeah. The last part, wouldn't, didn't Noel, who knows nothing, she's just an Instagram model. I don't mean it that way, but I'm saying. Well, uh, thank Oh, my God. Thank you. <laughs> she got four out of five last week, and yeah. she was just picking the way you are. Yeah. Um, you'll let us know what uh, the. Oh, they, they said Ravens. Oh, they said Ravens. Um, uh, this one, I'm picking the Browns. The quarterback for the Jaguars is out. Oh. The Browns, you're picking a color over a thing with fangs? No, I am. I got Panthers. Perfect. I love the way you're picking. This yeah. is the exact what, right what, thing to do. You, what are you, an idiot? <laughs> oh, a color is going to beat a fucking ferocious thing? Well, I, you know, I lose every week. So yeah. you're absolutely right. That's very impressive, Mike. Um, so he's going to pick the Jags. <laughs> and I don't know whatever. I see uh, Marcy pick picking the, the Jags. Oh, I, I said Panthers. No, no, you're right. No, I said Panthers. They're what are they, the Jaguars? Yeah, the Panthers are in Carolina. These are in Jacksonville. Okay. Um, I see Jags. Or I okay, see so Jags who's next? So we'll figure that out. Let's go. We got the uh, Las Vegas Raiders against the Minnesota Vikings. I'm going to pick the Raiders, Mikey. Oh, once again, you're an idiot. <laughs> I mean, you got to go with the Vikings. You're saying? Do you know how many people they raped and pillaged? That's true. Raiders are also pirates, so. Yeah. yeah that's a good point i don't know mike what are you doing i'm not even going to be able to tell i don't know mike <laughs> if raiders are pirates uh so he's going to pick the vikings and then you'll figure out yeah I'll pick the vikings. what the public is uh, are we almost done because i got a piss yeah so fast. Can... we're almost done and um and they're going las vegas and what are they doing the other one uh browns oh i know who i'm gonna pick um next. i'm picking kansas city what are what are they the chiefs oh yeah yeah i i'm gonna pick the chiefs too because the, the buffalo bills? yeah the buffalo oh buffalo bills it's yeah but buffalo's where they're from that's not what they are that's true but isn't logo of a buffalo yeah but what is the bills but mean? the chiefs uh, what is what, what they, well, they why they are they buffalo? called the bills i want to know why they're called the bills because they're half duck oh well the chiefs <laughs> over a duck exactly fuck everyone 
Um, this is so easy. I should gamble. You really should. Yeah. You're missing out. Um, and we'll figure out what everybody else wants there. Everybody says Chiefs, Mike. I see Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm going to pick the Cowboys here. The Cowboys over the Eagles. Philadelphia, you like the Eagles, Lara? Lara likes the Eagles. Interesting. I uh, I don't know. Cowboys could kill an eagle in a second. Like It depends how good of a shooter you are, right? Um, I suppose so. You don't want to take Lara's pick? Ooh, she wants she, the Eagles? She wants the Eagles. No, I don't. Well, <laughs> she could do her own, right? Oh, no. Are we? Are we? Are we? We can give her the peanut all right, gallery. Let's, let's, we can give her the peanut let's gallery. Give her, all right, I'll do the Eagles. But if I lose, you're fucking yeah, dead. Yeah, if he goes four and one, man, you're in big trouble. <laughs> And um, I see everybody else. Well, uh, I see a couple Cowboys, a couple Eagles. Cowboys, Cowboys, Eagles. They're even. Uh, uh, we'll just pick Lawrence. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll pick go with Lawrence. Lawrence. I, I already said we're picking Lawrence. All right. That's it. That's uh, our picks for week 14. Yeah. Where they play for pay. People aren't commenting anymore. Do they hate me? No, they're totally commenting. They love you. Oh, they are. They yeah. did have one question for you. Oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, is are you doing anything for Conan's new show on HBO? Oh, I don't. I didn't know about Conan. So obviously not. Yeah. What are you working on now? I mean, I saw. I was lucky enough to see what I think you want to do, which is a bar in space. It was brilliant. Yeah, it's a stop motion show. Another stop Black motion. Hole. It's about a, a, a dive bar in outer space where a bunch of depressed aliens sit and drink. <laughs> it's and, awesome. And, and there's not a lot of jokes in it. Uh, but, but it was very entertaining and it sticks with you. And I liked it a lot. And also you have George Wendt who plays Norm from cheers. Yeah. Sitting at the bar. <laughs> I, I, I wanted, awesome. I wanted to cast the, the most beloved character on cheers as the most despicable character and he um, was that yeah. and it was perfect the uh so. the space like the fake space serial show you guys did on mr show oh right yeah the racist in outer space yeah that's one of my favorite sketches like we still say keep them coming cleat blop oh yeah <laughs> mike we gotta go i think you're oh yeah, yeah. oh he just gotta take stuff downstairs this is a live show <laughs> is he is he t- going in and taking a shit in there? I don't know. No, no, no. You have to take uh, equipment. Well, I, I know you have to. Um, anyway, you have to. It's time to end. Anyway, I don't have to do anything except piss, and I, that's why I'm worried about how. how no, you can actually do that how right long now. he's going to be in the bathroom. <laughs> you and can do that right now if you want. It up. You, know? you can I mean, go. I, I you can go do it now. We can talk for five more minutes. Oh no, I, we can keep talking. I could hold it. I'm a man. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I don't. You know, plus, uh, you know, you've been drinking, so it's difficult. Go when I have fuck beer. Yourself. I cannot wait two more seconds. Yeah, same uh, here. Yeah. I don't know. No, as long as I, I'm not like two seconds next to the toilet, I can hold it. So wait, what's the plan then for the uh maybe the space one, space bar? No Black plan. Hole. I'm a, a alcoholic, I forget. What Why have you is. given up uh being you know, sober? No. Oh. <laughs> like you've given up. You've mentioned mm-hmm. that you life. Yes, pretty much. Um, I just like hanging out and well, i get that but like why you just hate the industry you're mad at them now and i'm not mad i want to do anything i just uh well you know when when you're a certain age it's over <laughs> <laughs> life is over well that's true yes yeah but uh you do have something coming up december 19th are we allowed to talk about that yeah yeah He's got a show. Allowed? It's at the show it's where mandatory. I saw. It's the Baker Baker's Falls, right? Yeah, the the downstairs. I'm, oh, the downstairs. Uh, yeah, I have a Christmas album that I recorded. I'm going to do a <laughs> bunch of songs. They're depressing Christmas songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, okay, so yeah, so we're going to do that December 19th. I'm doing it with a couple of friends. What time? Probably around eight. I oh, perfect. Know, we sure. finish this at seven, so it's perfect. Then we can all go. Yeah. Um, but. I want, I really literally want to do, I want you to bring, I, I want to watch this more than anything, but if it takes me to be in it, I will do that. But I feel like you could do it without me. The, uh, every November, what? Uh, Oh, November 13th, the odd couple, the odd couple thing. I, I've never got to see that you would do. Did, everyone probably knows that about you. I don't think they do. Cause it was, um, it's a brilliant idea. Was... So the odd couple obviously was Ooh play written by neil simon but then 
it was a television show. show so we would do two episodes from the tv show and who would you line. do it with i would do it with my friend kevin cash and so one of you would play felix unger and the other would play oscar madison on in one episode and then you'd that's switch right. for part. the second it was super that's fun brilliant yeah last time we did it was 1999 so oh really yeah i mean no you know we did it off broadway uh which was really really well I, you guess what anywhere is off broadway well that's true too but, th <laughs> but this was a true off broadway oh, it was. theaters on 42nd wow Street. in fact christopher walken was doing something next door and so we'd always run into him and, and my friend lawrence was directing and he was smoking outside and chris he's like chris why don't you come in and see the show lawrence i can't fortunately i'm doing a play right now at the same time. <laughs> i really want to see it more than anything it was so fun and we did but so i, I kind of want to we did the password too. one well we I would love said, to have I you in I it said i don't like acting but I think live acting's fun. So wait, so you, you never saw it in LA either, right? Because we did in LA. I never saw it at all. So uh, we did, so get this, we did the David Steinberg one. You remember the all the, do you know the Odd Couple ones? No. So we did, there's one with David Steinberg. Oh, okay. And Sarah, well, that, yeah. Sarah played David Steinberg oh, really? in the uh, Sarah she, Zilman. She's a perfect. Well, she was funny and it was cute. fun. And uh, I think I played Oscar in that one. And my friend Chris Regan, who writes for uh, Family Guy now, uh, played uh, Felix. And so Sarah was on the David Steinberg inside comedy on Showtime. Yeah. He goes, I understand you played me <laughs> in a production of The Odd Couple. Is that true? And she goes, yeah, my friend uh, Dave Juskow was uh, doing a production and I, I did play you. And he goes, and how was it received? Not well. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. I don't know. The, the first, we did it on a, a, on a Friday and a Saturday. And for some, it was raining. And for some reason, rain in Los Angeles is just a disaster. Oh, yeah, everyone's freaking and, out. And everybody freaked out. It's, it's, it's an earthquake. It just it, it yeah. bombed. It just bombed. It was horrible. Yeah, and the next night, the we did it over. the exact same way, and it killed the way right. it was. we thought it would. Yeah. I, I have to blame the rain because I can't figure out for yeah. the life of me. LA and Gary Shandling was there, too, to see it. The shitty on one? On Friday, yes. Uh, and maybe people were just like, oh, Gary's here. We maybe we shouldn't laugh oh yeah yeah you know, I, everyone was looking at gary that was the problem gary should not well i guess I, obviously maybe. now he will never i i have to blame anywhere. the rank because it was just so we didn't change one thing we did it exactly the same this next night and everything was terrific yeah. i don't know what the fuck happened um but i think it's a brilliant idea it's so much yeah. fun well we could do it again i think sometimes they let me do that kind of stuff here i mean uh, we could get fun. a place i will i will find a place and you could do it with someone else. I don't know. I would love to do it because uh, it just anybody that is into it and it's fun. The dialogue in those shows are wow. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever do the Albert Brooks one? Oh, um, well, yes, because we did the Howard Cosell one. Yeah. That's the Albert. one you're talking about because you think, think he plays so. like I his manager or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We did that one. We did, of course, the password one is the, the, oh, yeah. the best one. You know, so we have Betty White in it. You know? <laughs> I love pets. You know, like it's uh, yeah, it's so much. I'm glad you uh, think it's I a love, good plan yeah. too. You know, we used to do before you came back to town, I used to do readings here, like I would change the dialogue of The Godfather and like Love Actually, Greece. We all we did it right down here at the Village Underground, and it was the best. And I had all the comics, you know, you would have been great. I didn't have you then, you weren't living to here. Do what to read the parts? Oh, okay, for these things, and we just and I changed the dialogue. Oh. It was great, and uh, they're all on my podcast. You can actually hear the Christmas Love Actually one uh, on Just Go in the City. You can look it up, Just Go in the City, Greece, okay. and or Love Actually, and we did it. We did musicals, and um, actually, I was just talking to Noam last week, and we we're talking about doing Rocky and adding in the musical portion because oh, wow. I saw the musical, which is awful. But if we did, you know what? I have a copy of it. I'm not sure I'm supposed to show anyone, but it's the jaws 2 script or is it jaws 3 jaws where, 3d no where it, it's about the making of jaws 3 and it's a comedy oh wait Have i just read about that, that. yes uh yeah it's done by john hughes i think yeah maybe i but, think it was might have been a national lampoon right right yeah i, I was just i'm doing a book on john hughes and i right. just read about that right it was supposed to be jaws three yeah but then they actually made a it's jaws three yeah it's a joke yeah, yeah yeah you have that script yeah somewhere 
<laughs> wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I was just well, if you're doing reading book, about I, it. I might be able to get it. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how about this guy, John Hughes? Wow, just realizing how prolific he was. Yeah. This guy was a writing machine. He was right. insane. And he just wouldn't. He, I think he wrote The Breakfast Club over a weekend. You know, he just. Yeah. And on a typewriter, you know, like, yeah, I mean, yeah. it was insane. Yeah. How do you even do that? I can't even I imagine. I used to work on a typewriter. So did I. I used to, um, it was loud. to make extra money for college, I would type up people's papers. Oh, really? I was always a fast typist. That would not be me. Uh... That's why, that's why I still work now. You know, <laughs> I still have a job like that. Cause I'm... I got to piss out of my sweet. Okay. Coffee. Hey folks. Uh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah. Jaws three people zero. That's the one. Yeah. It was going to be uh, oh. Joe Dante. Yeah. Right. Uh, Gremlins direct. Yeah. Jaws three people zero. That's what it was called. That's amazing. I was just reading about it two days ago. Uh, folks, thank you so much for joining to us today. Dino, thank you. It was such a pleasure to finally have you on. You should come on more often. Cause we can just, shoot the shit and we make fun of the slides and that's I have nothing to do the best yeah i know it's perfect so yeah. uh it was great listen uh you could catch me when i'm not like passed out <laughs> <laughs> so uh yes uh, we'll be back in studio next week i don't know where our guest been i know it'll be, be hanukkah there. me so should we I, might do a should, candle should lighting. Do another one maybe uh you know we're gonna do a, a am i am i your uh, uh menorah lighting i'll be your cover <laughs> go fuck yourself <laughs> <laughs> that's why do all my co-hosts always end up saying at the end? it's kind of weird but uh no it's um we're you know the comedy cellar open every day christmas thanksgiving oh. come down the nine shows a night probably even more and of course the vegas one uh billy joey to z this week we have you can make billy me Jolson free yeah? uh yeah. <laughs> jolson's coming <laughs> uh, jolson mike where are you gonna be uh, this weekend I'll be with Rich Boss in Senate, New York, and then I'll be in uh, the Black Rabbit in Austin next week. Oh, uh, nice, no, I'm, nice, I'm nice. interested in where you are, Mike. And uh, we know Dino will be at Baker Falls on the 19th. I'm going to be any, Tuesday, any, right after the any show Any bar end. at any time. Yeah, and you can see I'll him everywhere there. in the bar if you really want to spend some time with him. It is just what you think it would be. Sorry about everything, everybody. Go Laura, fuck yourselves. Thank you, thank you so much for hanging out with us and watching the show. And we'll see you all you guys uh, next week. Have a great week, everybody. Good night.